Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. You can see I have a picture of a curve of some function, and I have a line going through two different points on that function. We call this a secant line. A secant line goes through at least two points on a curve. Uh, the slope of this secant line tells us about the average rate of change between these points on our curve. Remember the slope formula from algebra, if we have two points x1, y1, and x2, y2, the slope of this line is going to be the change in y over the change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We want to go ahead and make sure we've seen this in the function version of this. So we're just going to rewrite this slope equation in terms of function notation. So if this point, usually we think of this as x1, comma, y1. So that's our first point. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as x1, and then instead of y1, I'm going to write it as f of x1. So in other words, if I plug in x1, what do I get for a y value? We would call that f of x1. So that's just the function notation for y1. So up here, our second point is normally called x2, y2. And so in this instance, we'll go ahead and call this x2, comma, f of x2. So that's just the y value at x2 is all that's saying. It's really the same thing, it's just a different way to write it. So we're going to go ahead and write this formula in terms of our new notation. So our y values are going to change into function notation and our x values are just going to stay the same. right? So we would have f of x2 instead of y2 minus f of x1 instead of y1 and then the x notation for us really isn't changing. So on the bottom, we'll just still have x2 minus x1. So this is our new function version of the slope formula. So let's say we wanted to find the average rate of change of y equals 5x squared over the interval x equals 2. So you can see here we have x equals 2, a point there, and then to x equals 4. So this point is above the value x equals 4, if that makes sense. So we want to figure out what's the average rate of change on this function over this interval x equals 2 to x equals 4. So I know that this is my x1, and I know that this is my x2. Right? If it's an interval for x, that's the left side of my interval and the right side of my interval. So what I'm not really given here is I'm not given the function value. So what I need to do is go ahead and plug in these x values and find my y values, right? So let's go ahead and say that f of 2 is going to be 5 times 2 squared. And this will be 4, 5 times 4 will give us 20. So we have a y value of 20 when x is 2. And let's go ahead and figure out our f of x2. So if I plug in 4, that will give us 5 times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, and 5 times that will be 80. So now we have both x values, we have both y values. Let's go ahead and plug in. So our f of x2, when we plugged in x2, we got 80. That's like our y2. Minus when we plugged in x1, we got 20. That's like our y1 over 4 minus 2. And if we do the subtract here, we get 60 on the top and we get 2 on the bottom. So we get a slope of 30 for our secant line. That's the average rate of change on this function over the interval x equals 2 to x equals 4. Now what we want to notice is that the slope of a secant line is going to depend on which points we choose, right? So you'll notice as we change either of the two points that the secant line intersects, then the slope of the secant line is going to change. You can see that happening here. If you bring the points closer and closer together, then the slope of this secant line is actually going to get closer and closer to the slope of what we call a tangent line. And for a tangent line, we don't focus on going through two points on the function. We focus on going through one point on the function and just brushing the edge of the graph at a particular point with our line. This tangent line doesn't tell us about the average rate of change anymore. Its slope tells us about the instantaneous rate of change. So if you think about if you go on a trip, the average rate of change is the average speed that you were going the entire time, right? The average velocity, so to speak. The instantaneous rate of change is how fast were you going in the vehicle at 2.30 p.m., right? It talks about a specific point in time. 
So let's go back to our function version of the slope formula here. We're going to change this up just a little bit and see how we can move from this idea that we have an algebra of finding average rate of change on a secant line to this idea that we're going to focus more on in calculus, which is the idea of instantaneous change or a tangent line. So we have our formula for slope in its function format, and I'm going to change this up just a little bit on you again. So focusing on starting with this point, we have x and we have f of x, right? the y value for this. And what we're going to do to define this second point is actually think about what if I just move over some interval? I move over a little bit to another x value, okay? And how much we're going to move over is actually this distance h. So think about I start at this point and I move over h, whatever h is. It's maybe some small value, right? So my x value goes up by h. If I'm moving to the right h units, then my new point is going to have an x-coordinate of x plus h. So that's the x-coordinate for this. And then the question is, what is the y value now? Well, it would be whatever we got if we plugged this new x value in, right? So if this is some x here, and we move over h, so this is now x plus h, then if I took that x value and plugged it into the function, that would just give me the function value at x plus h. So we have these two points. We have x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h. So looking back at our formula here, think about this is the change in y and this is the change in x. Let's focus on the bottom first, the change in x. If I look at these two, how much am I changing? Well, without doing too much subtraction here, let's actually just look at how much am I changing in the x direction. Well, it would be this h distance, right? So my run, if you think of this as rise over run, my run my change in x is really whatever h value that is, right? So we'll go ahead and change the bottom of our formula just to h. So we have f of x2 minus f of x1 over h. And now let's do a similar thing, changing the notation for our y values on the top. These used to be y2 minus y1, now they're f of x2 minus f of x1. We'll just look at the y values we have here. My first y value is f of x, my second y value is f of x plus h. So if we're doing y2 minus y1, then we're going to get f of x plus h minus f of x. And this is how we're going to think of the slope formula as we move towards doing slopes of tangent lines. We call this a difference quotient. Okay, so we'll be using this idea of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This is really just the slope formula, but we're going to do something very special with this. Now remember that we said as we take these secant points and we move them closer and closer together, then we're going to get closer and closer to the slope of a tangent line, the instantaneous rate of change. So as we start doing that, basically what we're doing is thinking about letting h get smaller and smaller, and that's the same as taking the limit as h approaches zero. In other words, if we take the limit as h approaches zero, then that's going to give us our tangent slope. If we look at the formula for all tangent slopes everywhere, in other words, if I don't just look at this formula for one value of x, but I look at it as a formula for all values of x everywhere on our curve here, then I think of that as a function, and I call that function f prime of x. This f prime of x is actually what we call the derivative of our original function, and it gives us the formula for the slope everywhere on the function, and the derivative is a huge, huge deal in calculus. It'll tell us about slopes of tangent lines and many, many other things as we continue forward in calculus. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.